Guys, do you know that in China we can plant real trees in the desert simply on our phone? No kidding. Let me tell you why China is winning. China listens to black women. Hear me out, hear me out. When I first moved here, 2011, right? I told China. I, obviously, I didn't tell China anything, <laughs> but I did. I said this, whomever, okay, the 21st century, the modern space race of the 21st century is environmentalism. Whomever invests, masters, and perfects renewable energy, green technologies, biodegradable plastics, uh, desalination, the list goes on. Whomever does that is going to win. And what did China do? She said, hold my beer. <laughs> and I said, to, I said, because America ain't going to do that. They're not going to do that. They're not gonna, they don't see. Every time I try to tell America to do something, they're going to ask me how much it's going to cost. I'm like, when, when I tell China to do something, they be like, oh. You right. China listens to black women. And what does my mama say? When people don't listen, she said, you don't listen and that's going to be a downfall. <laughs> Hello, everybody. I'm in Maga T, Xinjiang, the only county in China surrounded by desert. And instead of being buried by sand, this place has been brought to life with forests and farmland. How? China planted over 2.8 billion trees here. Water was diverted from rivers hundreds of miles away through giant irrigation channels. Guys, do you know that in China we can plant real trees in the desert simply on our phone? No kidding, here is how it works. So there is a brilliant feature on Alipay and Forest. Every time you do something green, like walking instead of driving, taking public transportation, and Forest rewards you with green energy points. Save enough, voila! And Forest partners with NGOs to plant a real tree in every regions of China, such as Inland Mongolia. By 2023, over 600 million people have joined, planting over 500 million trees. So, my Chinese fellows, how many trees have you planted? Show us your badge in the comment section. Every day we can collect energy points and steal energy from friends. The trees planted are tough species like saxo, known as desert guardians. We thrive in harsh conditions. By simply connecting green energy on our phone every day, we can help create a big change for the planet. So let's stay committed to this project and do our part to make this world a better place. Between 2023 and 2028, China will produce as much renewable capacity as the rest of the world combined, plus an additional 30% on top of that. And you'll hear from Western politicians that China is the biggest CO2 emitter in the world. But what they're not telling you is that a huge percent of China's emissions come from manufacturing goods for the West. Even China emits the most carbon dioxide, they're killing the planet? Even though the West is exporting so much of their emissions to China, when you divide by their massive population, China only emits about a third as much as the United States does per person. How is the world's biggest emitter also responsible for saving the world from climate change? The answer is as contradictory as it is common sense. Marxism. Turns out you have to own all of the world's factories in order to transfer them to renewable energy. And that's what China's been busy doing while the West self implodes over culture war issues looking for a scapegoat to blame all of capitalism's problems on. <laughs> now remember for the rest of this video that China's 17% of the world's population doing the majority of the world's work fighting climate change. In one single year, China built as much new solar capacity as all of Europe or the United States have in their entire history. China accounted for 85% of the whole world's new solar capacity in 2023. And China's supply chain is now responsible for 95% of new solar panels in the world. The history books about this are gonna be pretty unbelievable. In 2016, China gave Akon, smack that all on the floor, Akon, one billion dollars of credit to build solar infrastructure in Africa. China is also responsible for the majority of the world's new wind energy. China is also building the majority of the world's new nuclear energy. And they've successfully created a nuclear reactor that cannot physically melt down. What? 
China is also pioneering hydrogen ammonia fuel technology where they have giant solar arrays near ports that ships can go to to refuel renewable hydrogen or ammonia fuel. It's eliminating millions of tons of marine diesel annually. And in terms of hydropower, nobody can even look at China. They're already responsible for the Three Gorges Dam, the biggest dam in human history. And they just unveiled a new plan for an even bigger dam that is going to produce 46 times the current energy output of the Hoover Dam. This one single project will reduce global carbon emissions by 0.53%, making it the most impactful climate action in human history. And you guys, I'm barely scratching the surface here. Like China has planted enough trees to cover more land than the state of Texas. This is the real deal. This is actually happening. And most importantly, this is not a coincidence. China actually ranks 14th in carbon emissions per person. China is a huge country. The United States is emitting around three times as much per person. Compared with China, Japan and South Korea emit around twice as much per person. But no one's ever complaining about them. And if you look at the total carbon emissions of the United States and Europe and compare it to China's total carbon emissions over time, there's no comparison, especially when you divided by their population. The West has already polluted so much to build their countries and they got a huge head start on the world. China's built like 70% now of the entire world's high-speed rail. This is a huge deal because traveling by plane is one of the worst things individuals can do for the environment and China's got like 1.4 billion people now using renewable energy for their rapid mass transit and those trains are nice. I've ridden on them a lot while I was in China and I think about them practically every day. Please, high-speed rail. And when China Chinese people aren't riding the high-speed rail, they're driving in electric vehicles. China now produces and purchases five times more electric vehicles than the second place country, the United States. And you can buy American EVs in China, but the United States government won't let you buy Chinese EVs in America. They welcome the market competition. They already manufacture over half of Tesla's in China. And that's why Elon Musk turned on Donald Trump with his trade war, because his profits were tied to Chinese manufacturing. And that's not a coincidence. That's Marxism. That's what China's plan has been all along. It becomes so valuable to Western capitalists that they can't attack you or they're attacking themselves. But we're getting too fascist now and Donald Trump is attacking China as much as he can get away with. So that's why it's important for Americans to resist the descent to fascism, delay it as much as possible while China saves the world from climate change. And none of this is a coincidence. The Chinese government is able to do all of this amazing work because they have sovereignty, because they own the means of production. Whoever owns the factories has the say. Look at all of the richest people in the United States states. They're pulling the strings on our government like no tomorrow. Elon Musk owns the Tesla factories. Mark Zuckerberg owns the Meta servers. Jeff Bezos owns all the Amazon warehouses and everything else they do. In China, the government welcomes rich foreign investment to come invest their money so they can build like crazy, but they do not let you get carried away. It is such a nuanced, complex system with over $11 trillion of revenue, two thirds of China's GDP generated annually by state-owned enterprises managed by the Communist Party of China. But China's private sector is huge too because all of the richest people know that the government is creating a stable and productive environment for people to invest in. All the biggest corporations that have a huge impact on the Chinese economy are required to have a board of Communist Party officials on them that guide the corporation in alignment with their national interests. So that's why China is able to play the long game and win. China is able to go after long-term goals and make it profitable to do so. While our government here is completely screwing over our economy in the long run for short-term profits for the richest few. I might not agree with President Xi on many things, but here's one fact. He has been a firm driver of environmental protection in China. There was a popular thing in many places in China. 1970s, water was clean for cooking. 80s, clean enough for washing clothes. 90s, fish disappeared. 2000s, rivers turned black and smelly. That's how fast China's economy grew and how badly nature paid the price. When I moved from Hunan to Beijing for college in 2005, the air pollution was so bad, my throat literally hurt. But in the last decade, things changed. By 2024, 87% of days had good air quality. PM 2.5 dropped from 72 in 2013 to under 30. Clean rivers went from 65% to over 90%. 
forest power grew from 21% to 25%. And honestly, I can feel it. Beijing today is nothing like 20 years ago. The scars are much clearer and the rivals are totally different. Now, Westerners often compare China to Europe or the US and the sea flows, but most Chinese compare to the past. They feel real progress, and the consensus here is China's environment will keep improving. Whether you like President Xi or not, this is a real environmental protection story. I'm Yuan, a Chinese founder and scholar on packing how this country and the world really works. Follow me and check my bio page for more. Thank you. When China was the factory of the world and polluting more than any other country, China is costing the world. But now China is trying its best to use green technology to mitigate the pollution for the benefit of the world. Again, what can China do? This is China's wind power heartland, and I'm standing in the middle of it. This is Huitan Xile, in Mongolia, Asia's largest wind farm. Thousands of wind turbines stretch out to the horizon. No filters, just real power in motion. This all started 30 years ago with just a few turbines. Today, thousands, enough to power millions of homes. And the amazing part, every single turbine here is made in China. Two decades ago, China imported wind technology. Now, it leads the world. Companies like Goldwind, Invention, Minyang, they are exporting to bars and tech globally, competing with GE, Siemens, and Vini. And this place, it used to be known for coal. Now, it's where China takes the future. What's really wild is, this isn't some mega coastal city like Shanghai or Shenzhen. It's in Mongolia, a region most people never think about, but it's now one of China's greenest frontiers. Over 40% of electricity in some regions comes from renewables. They are piloting hydrogen, battery storage, smart grids, turning remote grasslands into high-tech energy lives. So next time someone says, China just builds big stuff for sure, show them this. It's not a show, it's a wind. It's a scale, and it's changing the game quietly but massively. I'm Yuan, a Chinese founder and scholar unpacking how this country and the world really works. Follow for honest takes from someone who's lived, built, and studied both China.